So for today's topic, um, I'll be covering uh, journal citation reports um, as a whole. Uh, however, my scope will be around strategies on publishing your research so that you can gain the maximum research impact. Okay. So I'm going to share with you something on the screen here, some statistics to start with. Uh, the, this is the ever-growing scholarly publishing landscape. Uh, based on a 2018 uh, report, it has been mentioned that on a yearly basis, almost 3 million papers are published. That's across all subject specializations. Uh, and they end up going into almost 42,500 scholarly journals. And out of which there are close to 15,000 open access journals. And on an annual basis, we are seeing more and more new journals popping up, right? And because of this um, advocacy of trying to publish more open science into open access journals, uh, there are more and more predatory behaviors popping up across the publishing landscape. So what are some examples of these pub predatory um, behaviors? Okay, so probably like for, for uh, laymen, okay, uh, businessmen actually, they, they will always think of things to try and gain some money, monetary value or monetary benefits. So when it comes to open access publishing, okay, the journal is free to read. Yeah, but if the journal is free to read, where does the money actually come from? Okay. They, it's usually from the authors themselves. So the authors themselves would usually have to pay an article processing charge. And if the journal uh, is predatory, they tend not to have um, the proper ethics in place to do things like uh, scientific peer review. Okay, scientific peer review is a very important step in ensuring that science is uh, correct and legitimate. And, and a lot of these predatory journals do not have that, okay? So why don't they have that? The reason is because they want to make quick money from researchers. Researchers, especially the PhD students, they are tied down by time. So probably you take about uh, three years to get your, your degree. And within these three years, you have to publish probably one or two papers. Okay? So you're, you're tight for time and you spend probably six months to a year doing your research. So imagine this, you are uh, rushing to get your, yourself published. And if you come across a journal that says, oh, I have a journal impact factor of this, 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 this. Uh, I am a multidisciplinary journal. Uh, upon submission, your article will be published within uh, say two weeks. To an early career researcher, an uh, uh, inexperienced researcher, that sounds actually very enticing, yeah? So what happens? The journal will say, oh, very easy. You just give me US, uh, USD $100 and go like, hmm, USD $100 doesn't sound too much. Yeah, compared to probably USD 3000 in other journals. <laughs> yeah, and you, you happily submit your, your article to that journal. Then what happens? Great, two weeks later, your article gets published. But one day when you are sending in your, your article to be recognized in probably certain uh, for funding grants and funding applications or applications somewhere else for um, other purposes, the authorities might say, hey, this journal isn't legitimate. It is not a real journal. Yeah. So then what happens? For you, you lose your research because you've already published somewhere. Okay. And it's very difficult to lock down that journal because ultimately, they are there as a website. Whatever that you they publish there, if you think that it's right and you believe it, you submit it, that's kind of like your prerogative. So that's kind of like a gray area when it comes to predatory journals. And we always advocate at Web of Science that you need to be very careful in the way you select that journal because your work is very important. You have spent six months, one year. We don't want it to go down the drain. All right. So why did I share with you this scenario? The reason is because for Web of Science, the way we select the journals is very much like how you screen for predatory journals. Right? 
So I'm going to share this checklist with all of you. So this is not a checklist from me, but I've um, extracted this from this website, thinkcheck.submit.org. Okay. It gives you a very simple checklist for what you need to look out for when you're selecting a journal. Okay. The first criteria, I'm not sure, but can you see this? Because can you see the, the first statement? Yes. Okay. okay. Because I'm seeing the, the Zoom menu. So oh, okay. the first thing is on whether your peers uh, know the journal. So do, do your colleagues know the journal? Okay. So you can ask, uh, probably ask Sir Patrick, <laughs> if you're in that same field as Sir Patrick, ask him, do you know this journal? <laughs> have, you, have you read this journal before? Okay. That's one of the first few questions you should probably be asking, especially those that are your seniors or those who are your professors. Then the next question is, can you easily identify and contact the publisher? Now on uh, websites, on journal websites, they need to state very clearly who is the publisher. Okay, so sometimes the universities um, do have their own journals, all right? but they, besides the journal name, if they belong to a separate publisher besides the university, they should also make it clear. Okay? So, Take note of that. Make sure there's an address as well, somebody you can contact for, um, from the publisher as well as from the journal. Is the journal clear about the type of peer review it uses? So make sure that the journal declares the kind of peer review process that it follows. Okay, for those of you who are not familiar with what is peer review, okay, peer review is, um, as its name suggests, your peers will review your work. So who are your peers? The peers would be the, the experts in the same field as you or that topic that you are writing on. Okay? They will be cross-checking your signs. So how the methodology that you've used, the structure of writing your manuscript, uh, is it clear, is it concise? So this is peer review. There are different types of peer reviews. There is um, a single blind. Single blind would mean that uh, either probably the, the peer reviewer is that uh, the author's name will not be de declared to the peer reviewer, okay? So at, from the peer review standpoint, I won't know who this author is. I am only reviewing his work, that work in front of me. Then there is also the double blind peer review. Double blind would mean that um, both the author and the peer reviewer are not known to each other at all. So both, both ways, right? And then there's also, Open peer review. Open peer review is, is actually kind of trending now because um, you, you get more and more um, commitment to publishing ethics. So open peer review is one of the commitments where the peer reviewer's name is there as well as the author's name. So both of you know who you are and yeah, open discussion can happen. Okay, so the journal has to state what type of peer review process it uh, uses. It also has, if possible, declare how long it usually takes. So I understand that from a journal's perspective, sometimes um, the timing is not controllable, but on average, they should be able to advise you on roughly how long uh, peer review process takes based on past experience. Okay. Then are articles indexed in services that you use? Okay, not, I'm not talking about Google, yeah? Google indexes everything, <laughs> All right? So I'm talking about um, things like Web of Science or any other um, uh, specialized databases that you're using. Are those articles indexed in those services? So when you're searching for the article title, they should belong to um, one of these databases and you're able to find them. Next, is it clear what fees will be charged? Okay, this is very important. So besides the article processing charge, the journal has to be very clear on the kind of uh, fees that they collect. Okay, some examples are things like if you have a color figure, so if you're, you have a picture that in full color and you want it in full color, some journals do charge a fee for that. Yeah, so that those fees have to be declared at the start, either as a guideline to the authors or on their websites. Okay. Then does the journal site explain what these fees are for? So like what I mentioned, they have to be clear. And do, this one, this is very important. Do you recognize the editorial board members? Okay, it's very easy to now search for experts on Google. Yeah, 
And these predatory journals, they are very clever. They know that you will check. So they would probably just try and find um, some expert scientists, maybe some Nobel laureates, put them in the editorial board. Yeah. But, and, and when you look at these names, you go like, wow, they are experts. And you go, okay, I think this journal is legit. But you need to dig further. All right. Sometimes some of these journals are rushing to put in layouts in place. And what happens is that they maybe uh, did not put, they put the affiliation wrong. Okay, so perhaps this scientist is actually uh, from MIT, but it's stated at, at Harvard. Yeah. Okay. So, so just take note of that. Make sure you check each and uh, every editorial board member, especially those editorial board members that look too good to be true. Okay. Just check. Then um, finally, some journals still do not declare this, okay, but if the journal does declare that they are a member of a recognized industry initiative, even better. Okay, so do they belong to, for example, the Committee on Publication Ethics, which is called COPE, okay, or whether the, if the journal is open access, is it listed on the directory of open access journal? All right. So these are just some of the main checklists that I would suggest that you look at uh, before you determine whether the journal can be trusted. But of course, if you do not have the time to look through everything here, just take note that for Web of Science core collection, a lot of these checklist questions have already been addressed through our selection criteria. So when we are selecting journals to be indexed in Web of Science, we already ask those questions. We are already verifying all those facts about those journals. And that is the reason why for Web of Science core collection, we don't index every single journal. We index only those that fulfill at least our 24 quality criteria. Okay. So this is how our curation takes place. I've explained this last week, but I'll just repeat this um, uh, in case. So for any journal that wants to be indexed in Web of Science, it has to go through an evaluation process. If it meets our 24 quality criteria, it will be indexed in Emerging Sources Citation Index, which is ESCI. Now, these journals can cover across multiple disciplines. If the journals meet our additional four more... Was there a question? Okay. So if the journal meets our additional four more impact criteria, then they will be indexed in our flagship specialized collections, which is the Science Citation Index, Social Science Citation Index, and the Arts and Humanities Citation Index, right? And this is our detailed criteria for quality as well as impact. And if you can have a quick look, you realize that a lot of these are what I've mentioned in my checklist. So things like verifying the journal publisher, making sure they have a peer review policy, contact details, uh, scholarly content, editorial affiliation details, author affiliations, presence of ethics statements, uh, website functionality, whether it's professional or not, working or not, all right? Uh, and then the content relevance, editorial board composition, validity of statements. Now, this is very important. So whatever that they claim on their website, say, for example, they say, oh, I have a journal impact factor of 3.55 on Web of Science, then we need to go and check and make sure that that claim is true, all right? So all these are taken care of when selecting those journals. Now, and that's why it is important to refer to Web of Science, okay? Any questions around predatory publishing and how Web of Science works to help avoid this? No, clear? All right. Then this takes me into the next part. So what are some of these strategies that I can apply? So now you told me that I have a list that I can rely on to select my journals. So how am I gonna select my journals to publish in? And how do I make sure that um, I am doing the best so that I can publish uh, with impact? Okay. So I'm gonna share with you some, um, some strategies. Okay. So on the screen here, I have five, five strategies that you can start with, okay. um, this can be used by both experienced researchers as well as uh, early career researchers. 
Okay? The first strategy is to look for government accredited journals. Okay? So some of you might be early career researchers, you get a bit nervous when it comes to publishing. Okay? So you might want to start off uh, somewhere where you can manage. Okay? Think of it like learning how to swim. Okay? Uh, I think what, uh, I, for me, I still can't swim. And the reason was because my coach threw me into the deep end of the pool at the beginning. All right, so I have a phobia of water. So avoid that scenario. What I'm mentioning here is that always be able to stand up in the water and be able to breathe. All right, otherwise you'll you just be scared off and you go like, I don't want to publish anymore. All right. So looking for government accredited credit, journals, where can you find this? Okay, either you could try and find a, a local citation index, okay? For us, Asia, we, we have the ASEAN Citation Index that, that you could refer to. Is that what you are referring to as well, Sir Patrick, or do you have something else in Philippines that yeah. you refer to? Uh, we, we look at the ACI, but we also have a Philippine Citation Index. Yeah, okay, so, so you can refer to both, both the Philippines as well as the uh, Asian Citation Index. Okay. So those are journals that you could look at because they would have been accredited by the local government bodies. Now, the next one would be internationally recognized journals. So now that you have some experience in, in publishing, you want to go and say, hey, I want to go into the, the big C now. I want to be able to see the world. Then look for journals that are indexed in international databases like the Web of Science. So as, um, and the reason why I say Web of Science rather than what is available on Google Scholar is because of the curation that we have. And you want to make sure that you are not publishing in um, uh, predatory journals. Okay? So for when you use Web of Science or even journal citation reports, you will be able to find high quality international journals to publish in. Then the third strategy is to find journals with high rank and prestige. So what are these journals? Now, the journals that are indexed in Web of Science comes from the ESCI, SCI, SCIE, and AHCI. But not all indexes will have a journal impact factor. Only those that are in the science and the social science citation index will have a journal ranking based on journal impact factor. Okay, so just take note of that. So this third strategy is focused on those journals that have a journal impact factor and they have a quartile rank for those journal impact factors. There's another statement that I've included here. So besides aiming for journals that are high impact factor Q1 journals, right? You can say that I want to publish my manuscript there. However, the question is, is your science, is your research attractive enough for those high impact journals? Okay, so a lot of researchers around the region always ask me, I keep sending my articles to these uh, journals, but I keep getting rejected. Why? So I, I say, perhaps it's a good thing to consult probably your seniors who are in this same field, more experienced, discuss about your topic and see whether that actually addresses any existing gaps in that, that topic area or that research area. Okay? Because think of it from the perspective of these high ranking journals. What do they want? They want to continue to have high rank. All right? So in order to get that high rank, what do they need to do? They need to publish attractive science, science that is applicable to society, science that is applicable to advance the current state of the topic. Okay? So always think, these two have to go together, aiming high, but also choosing the topic that will attract those that are high on the charts. Okay, keep that in mind. Now the, the last two strategies are quite uh, seldom considered by researchers. Okay, number one, I'm aiming for journals that get cited very quickly. Now think about this. If you publish your paper before you graduated and you got your first citation before you graduated, do you think that's a good thing if you're going to continue on the path of say faculty or research? You get your citations fast, right? You get your citations early. It's a good thing for your CV. Yeah? It is. So, yeah. So what better way than to be able to identify a metric that will help you identify some of these journals? 
these journals that would give you a possibility to get cited faster. Right? So on journal citation reports, we have this metric called immediacy index. Okay? As its name suggests, it's about how immediate I get my citations. Okay? This is measured by looking at the citations in one year from uh, articles published in that same year. Okay? So if, for example, this journal published 10 articles that year, and he, they, they received a total of, say, 200 citations. So you take 200 divided by 10, that will give you a number of uh, 20. So if you manage to publish your article in there, this immediacy index of 20 will guarantee you a minimum of one citation for your article. And because it increases the chance, there's a high, very high chance that you'll get your first citation in the first year of publication. Right? So this is a, in the metric that you should be looking out for. I will explain this later on as well. Now the final strategy, this one will be for those who are looking to continue on in a research career as, or faculty career. Okay? I want to publish in journals that get cited for a long time. Okay? As faculty, as researchers, you want to make sure that your, your science um, can test the length of time. Yeah, can last the length of time. Uh, it depends on the subject category sometimes, okay? but for uh, most sciences, uh, you want to be able to still be applicable for quite a number of years. Right? So on JCR, we have this thing called cited half-life metric. Okay? Uh, it's, not, it's nothing to do with nuclear waste. Okay? Um, it is basically how long a potential your article will have to get to get citations, all right? So this metric is measured by number of years. So if it says six, it means that if you publish your article in that journal, you have a potential of getting citations up to six years, all right? So these two last um, strategies with this immediacy index and cited half-life is something unique to journal citation reports that you can't um, calculate on your own. It is, it is dependent on the data that we always have on Web of Science, on how, how the citations come in, when the citations come in, and we are able to make these calculations. Okay. So based on those five strategies, I will, I will explain to you an overview of what the journal citation reports covers. Okay. So why use journal citation reports? Okay. Uh, I've already explained the web of science goes, has a very strict curation of the content that goes into the platform. So the journals that are in journal citation reports cover the journals in the web of science core collection. So the science, Social Science, Arts and Humanities, and the ESCI journals are all listed in the journal citation reports. And this report is published on an annual basis in June. Okay? And that's when the journal impact factor for the journals come up. Okay? So some of you might be familiar with looking at some of these publishers' websites. So if you notice, if you go into those websites in 1st of June every year, you could see that some of the journals have a uh, say a journal impact factor of three. Okay? And then towards the end of June, when you go back to the same website, you see hey, the journal impact factor changed to say 3.5. Okay? And the reason is because of this report that came out. Right? So the latest report that we have is was released last year, which is 2021. Okay? And that would be the 2020 journal impact factor. So just take note, there's always a time lag uh, between the, the report coming out and the journal impact factor. Okay. Now, the, we, the journal citation reports has been around for a very long time, actually. So even longer than, than when I was born. <laughs> okay, so since 1976. And it has been then continuously used as a way to measure the citation impact of a journal. Nothing has changed um, ever since then, okay, except for the, the format. So it used to be in a book published, and then we moved to the web format in 1998, right? But 
Still, the transparency of how the general impact factor has been calculated has always been there in every single issue. Okay. Some of you might have seen the previous journal citation reports um, uh, and you might remember that there was only probably 14,000 journals at that time. Okay? And the reason was because the previous version of journal citation reports only included the science and the social science journals. And that would be those that, are, have, that have a journal impact factor. But given the feedback from the research community that said that um, they always get uh, asked, why, why is it that I, I'm not recognized even though I'm publishing in a ESCI journal? Okay, so to address that question, we have decided to include all journals from Web of Science core collection into the database. Okay, so now you would get close to 21,000 journals on journal citation reports. But still only 12,000 plus journals will have the journal impact factor. And this would be the science and the social science journals only. Okay. Now there's also a very important point that I wanted to help uh, to get, get your attention on is yes. this one. So we have 11 journals suppressed this year. So every year when the report is released, if the journals do not fulfill our criteria anymore, they will be delisted from Web of Science. Okay, so we call these suppressions. Uh, sometimes this could be, this is because we receive feedback from the researchers that, hey, um, there, there are some uh, questionable behaviors of these journals, can you please investigate? And we will do so, all right? Um, the reason why those journals were indexed in journal citation reports in the first place uh, is because they might have already been there for 20 years. Okay? It could have been a very long standing journal, but maybe in recent years, they have changed their editorial team. So when you, when you change your whole editorial team, the whole makeup and the whole direction of the journal might change. And when that happens, then we, have, we might have to reevaluate those journals. And when that happens, they, if they don't no longer meet our criteria, they get removed, okay? Then we also have uh, editorial expressions of concern. So what are these editorial expressions of concern? So these are journals that for now are still in the list, okay? However, we have issued them with a warning to say, hey, um, please take note that you have excessive self-citations. So if you do not correct that, then we, have, we might have to remove you next year. All right, so we do not do this immediate removal, but we give them a warning. All right, so if they are able to correct this within the next year, then they'll stay there. From a researcher standpoint, referring to these two lists will help you to make sure that you are not publishing in any risky journals. Risky in what sense? Because if you if your work is if your if you are required to publish in a journal, uh, in a journal that is indexed in the of science, if you chose to publish in any of these two types of journals, then uh, quite likely it might end up off the list next year. Okay, so I'll, I'll share where you can find this list later on. Okay, so besides the additional uh, content, which is the uh, AHCI and ESCI journals, we now have a new normalized metric called uh, journal citation indicator. Okay. So the new normalized um, metric has been calculated based on uh, CNCI, so category normalized citation impact. Okay. Uh, I think Sir Patrick will know this, this particular um, indicator. So for all journal, for all articles, the citations that they have or they receive will be normalized according to their field, according to the publication type and the publication year. Okay? And they will be given this metric called CNCI. So CNCI is um, very easy to read. So later on, I'll explain to you how that is done. But this journal citation indicator is based off the average CNCI of all the articles published in that journal, okay?
So just a quick reminder, okay? Uh, I cannot emphasize this enough because researchers around the region keep asking me the same question. So if now you include AHCI and ESCI, does that mean that they also have a journal impact factor? No, all right? So the AHCI and ESCI journals still do not get a journal impact factor. And the reasons are here. So for ESCI journals, they only met our quality criteria. They have not met our impact criteria and therefore they cannot be given a journal impact factor. For AHCI journals, on the other hand, yes, they have met our impact criteria. However, compared to the other hard sciences like clinical, natural and social sciences, arts and humanities actually differ very significantly in the type of content and how they are cited. Okay, and therefore, um, it has been decided that AHCI journals will not be given a journal impact factor because they tend to be quite low. So when you're comparing across the board a very low journal impact factor, actually that, that metric becomes uh, meaningless, right? So instead of giving a journal impact factor, we have provided them with these indicators. Okay, so the AHCI and ESCI journals will get that new indicator called journal citation indicator. So using this, you will be able to quickly identify those that are performing above global average, those that are performing below global average. You also have things like percentage OA. OA is open access, so open access gold. Okay, this particular metric is useful for, um, especially for collection management, actually, for the library. So Ms. Charlene, you can take note. Uh, uh, so some of these journals require a subscription, okay? but there's a portion of their content that is always permanently free. Those are gold open access. So we are able to show you the percentage of open access gold so that you can make some judgment to say, hey, I am paying, say, X amount for this journal subscription. If they are giving me, if there's already 20% open access gold content, why am I paying so, such a high subscription fee? Okay, so you can start asking questions like this using this metric. Now, then we talk about immediacy index. So remember earlier on the strategy that I mentioned. So you have immediacy index, and this is uh, an example here on the screen. So this journal has an immediacy index of 1.015. Okay, just remember this. Any number above one means that you have a very, very strong chance that you will get your first citation in the first year of publication, okay? Anything lower than one means you have less than 100% chance, all right? Then you have this other three indicators, eigenfactor score, normalized eigenfactor score, and article influence score. Now, this three are um, not you. Effect of like the, um, how to say, the influence, so how, how uh, your citation relationship, so how many, inf how many influential journals are actually citing you. So that's the kind of score this is. Okay? Uh, same thing for article influence score, how many different articles are citing you. Okay? Then uh, for citing half-life and cited half-life, okay? I mentioned about cited half-life. So cited half-life is about how long the articles in that journal get cited. Okay, so say for example here, the cited half-life for this journal is so 10 years. So it means that journal articles, the articles in this journal uh, get citations up to 10 years. Yeah. Whereas for the citing half-life, it's actually the other way around. So citing half-life would mean that um, what kind of content is the, are the articles in this journal citing? Okay, so this journal is, the articles in this journals are actually citing content up to 12 years old. Okay, so this is um, a, a different perspective to the citation relationship. Okay. Now there are many indicators here, so I will not be explaining too much details about each of them, but I've already mentioned about immediacy index and cited half-life. Those will be two very useful ones for researchers already. Now there's one more that is very important, which I haven't listed here, is this one, percentage of articles in citable items. 
A. So what is this? So for the calculation of the journal impact factor in journal citation reports, the citable items we take into consideration are articles and reviews. Okay. Just remember, we take into consideration articles and reviews only. Okay. So articles plus reviews equals to citable items. So if the percentage of articles in citable items is 99.9 uh, 99.24 percent. What does that mean? It means that this only has seven, 0 0.76 percent reviews in citable items. So as a researcher, what does this mean? It means that if you are publishing a review paper, this might not be suitable because they publish less than one percent of reviews. In the content. Okay, is that clear? Yeah. Yep. Okay, now to Julian, the new method. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah before we before yeah. we move forward. So yeah. so very quick questions. Mm -hmm. Uh we have people here from the school of law. So that would be included journals publishing law articles are included in the SSCI, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. and there are also people here uh with the fine arts department. Mm, and so that, those, they would have journals in the AHCI. Yes, yeah. correct, okay. correct. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, so, so sometimes some of these humanities uh, topics can be quite gray as well. So in the event that say um, some of these humanities subjects uh, have researchers that require them to say, hey, I need to publish in a journal, in perfected journal, then I would say try and look under SSCI and see whether there's any particular genre that would meet um, those topics. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, next part is about the new metric. So with this new metric called journal citation indicator, how can you use this? So I mentioned before, it is the average of the CNCI of every article in that journal, okay? So what this means is we take the CNCI of all the articles and the reviews published in the preceding three years, and we average out their CNCI. Then this becomes their journal citation indicator. Okay. So very easy. The journal citation indicator above one will show that the journal has performed above global average. Okay. Any number below one, it means that it has performed below the global average. So for this case, 0 0.74, this journal is performing below global average, okay? So now together with the journal impact factor, it becomes even easier for you to identify which are those that are performing very well, okay? That means high impact factor and performing above um, global average. So what's the difference between the journal impact factor and the JCI? Okay, number one, the journal impact factor is a journal level uh, metric, meaning it's calculated based on uh, an individual journal citation uh, performance uh, measurement, meaning that if there are a handful of articles with really high citations, it actually helps to bring up the performance of that journal. Okay, because it's a calculation of the formula only. So citations of 2020 divided by the number of articles in 2018 plus 2019. Okay, so this is um, a journal level metric. It is not normalized. So when I say it's not normalized, it means that once you calculate this number, so say for example, um, a journal in veterinary science, okay, has a journal impact factor of say 10. You compare it with a journal that has a journal impact factor of uh, five in say um, uh, in business. Okay, can you confidently say which of these two journals is performing better? You can't based on the journal impact factor. You can't because in veterinary science, the highest journal impact factor might be a 20, 25. Yeah, whereas for business, the highest journal impact factor might be a six or a seven. Okay, so in that comparison, 
you can't tell which of those two journals will be better performing unless you take into context where there are a range of journal impact factors for the category. For the journal citation indicator, this already takes into consideration the subject specialization. And this goes down to the article level, which means to say we look at the article itself, its performance against other articles in that same subject category. So once you average that out, it becomes a normalized indicator. And therefore, you can easily compare the veterinary science journal with the business journal now. Okay. Okay. Any questions before I go into the live platform? Uh, another question, Julian. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're, we are looking at revising our research policies at the yeah. university. Mm -hmm. uh, one, we are trying to reward graduate students who actually publish uh, papers. Uh, mm -hmm. And the other is uh, for those established researchers, we're also trying to give more incentive for those who publish in, in, in better journals. So right now we're looking at the quartile system, but would you suggest that we look at the CNCI instead? Yeah, I, I would think that um, looking at the JCI will also be a very good way to look at it. Um, but one thing I need to caution about that if you want to apply it immediately, is that it's a new indicator. Yeah. So to a lot of journals out there, it's still very new. Uh, and right. when that happens, right, because for so, so many decades, they've been stuck on journal impact factor and that's how right. they actually work yeah. to improve. But now there's a JCI and they go like, oh, so it's actually telling me that I need to find more impactful papers to publish. So then it, because it's a first year, um, it might not be as stable in, Correct. in, in the long run, right? So, so that's just my caution. You can use, right. try and use both <laughs> if that's yeah. possible. Yeah. Yes. All right, thanks. Welcome. Actually, in terms of performance of the researchers, um, I actually have an, an alternative way rather than looking at the, the publications that they go into, uh, but rather after they have been published, what was their citation? So you could do a, a separate type of a reward system, which rewards them based on their, the impact that they have achieved after a certain period of time. <laughs> yeah, but maybe that's for a later, a later date. <laughs> yeah, I think mo most people would like immediate rewards. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, that's why we say two tiers, right? So it's a, the immediate recognition that there's a potential and then the final yeah, and then the impact. Yeah. based on performance. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So to, to start things off, I wanted to begin with Web of Science. Okay. So uh, to access Web of Science, go via your library's easy proxy if you're off campus. Okay. I think the library will be able to paste the easy proxy link onto the chat box if possible so that everyone is uh, clear where to access Web of Science. Okay. Once you're signed on on the easy proxy, you can go search for Web of Science or journal citation reports. So once you get into Web of Science, okay, the first way of identifying uh, journals to publish in is through using the analyze results function on Web of Science. Okay. Um, oh, there's a race. Okay. I thought I saw somebody raise their hand. It's okay. Uh, okay. So to do so, you just do a quick search on your topic. So let's say your research area is on, uh, say, livestock. Okay, let's do a livestock. Okay, that's a huge number. You might want to reduce this to, um, say, shrimp. Okay, and search 109. So anything that has to do with livestock and shrimp, okay, of course, this is a very quick and the research that I'm doing, okay? <laughs> so based on your topic that you're familiar with, put in the keywords that you want and do the search. Based on this set of search results, click on analyze results and go and look at publication titles. Okay? 
So these are the publication titles which I can publish in if my research is on livestock and shrimp. Okay, frontiers in microbiology, agriculture, food hygiene, safety science. Okay, so this becomes a, a very quick way to find specifically journals that publish your topic. Right? Because if you are going to try and retrieve a general list of journals in a specific subject category, uh, it might not be always relevant. The reason is because some journals publish multiple topic areas. Okay? So if you just look at one subject category, you might miss out on certain things. Okay, so this is method number one, using Web of Science to search and you can identify those journals quickly. If you want to see whether they have a journal impact factor from here, you can either click and click on view records. Uh, here. Then right here, if there is no link, okay, it means that this journal does not have a journal impact factor. Okay, let me just quickly check. Oh, it does. Hmm, that means the link has some issues. Okay, I'll report that back. But here, if you see, there will be a journal impact factor for the journal right here on the record itself. Okay, if you want to see its quartile, just click on the journal's name. You will see its rank and quartile based on journal impact factor. Hmm. So just take note, this was only available because um, the university has a subscription to journal citation reports. That's why there's an interlinked um, information between journal citation reports, quartiles, journal impact factor, and web of science. Okay. All right. So since we are on web of science, one more thing that I would want to share with, check with, um, share with you is to analyze based on collaborators. So let's say you are in livestock, shrimp, okay? And you want to find who are the experts in this field? Who can I reach out to to collaborate? You could do this by also going to analyze results and look at either authors or affiliations. So which are the institutions that are doing this area of research? You have Mahidon University, Kuda University, and if you want to have a look at those publications, again, click on view records and you can see those publications. Okay. So for researchers, this is a very quick way to identify who you can potentially reach out to to collaborate on your topic. Okay. The other way of finding collaborators um, that I wanted to share is based on who is citing um, USC, okay? So for University of San Carlos, you can search for your affiliations first, okay? And then you look for San Carlos, University of San Carlos, and search. So you want to try and reach out to those um, uh, that have cited you more recently, okay? Because you don't want to be reaching out to those that, that have already retired and exited from research, right? Okay, so you, you want to find those that are more active. Okay, so you might want to limit this by publication year. Okay, and you refine. And then you go to citation report. Okay, so this would show you um, the citations that you're getting in total. So these are your citing articles, meaning who is citing you, right? So if you want to find out who is citing you, just click on analyze without self citations to remove University of San Carlos. Okay, so just click on analyze and go to affiliations. And this would be those that are citing you. So interesting, you have citations from Harvard, Harvard Medical School, University yeah. of Oxford. Yeah. Again, probably yeah. OPS. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, you could limit it to your own specialization as well. So uh, if you remember here, can I just go back to St. Carlos? Okay, so remember here, if you've, I've limited this to publication years, one, two, three, four, five, the next thing you could do is limit it by category. So say, for example, you are in 
You want to try green sustainable signs? Let's try this. Um, why, why don't we try something on uh, education or cinema? Is there anything mm -hmm. like that? Mm. More recent years. Uh, Nothing. Business, no. There's one article. There's business, yeah. Yeah, sociology, three articles. Right. Mm. Computer science? Yeah, why not computer science? Let's try and see whether there's anything, yeah? We find this, so we have three, yeah, there are citations. Oops, sorry, hang on, yeah. I have to open the intercom. Right. Okay, so from here you have three, uh, and I do see they do have two citations. So let's see who is citing you. So these are the two articles. You could just click on these two articles and see who are they, okay? So we have one, so this is from Korea. So this article was oh. from Korea. He, he cited you. This is from Sun Chong Hong University. Yeah. Right. And then the other one would be here. If you click on this, then this is the other article from Ontario Tech University. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. so you could do it this way to uncover some interesting uh, uh, information <laughs> to use. So to the, the idea is that these are people who know of us already. Yes. And therefore we can reach out and yes. possibly Correct. collaborate with them. Correct. Yeah. So that's, that's the purpose of me showing you this way of identifying collaborators. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for Web of Science. Uh, if you want more detailed step-by-step uh, -step utility of this resource, uh, you can always refer to the previous recording from last week so that you can see the other features that are available on this platform. Okay, now let's move on to journal citation reports. So for journal citation reports, you can access this through Web of Science as well. So under products, you can click on journal citation reports and that will take you to the uh, journal citation reports platform. Okay. So on this platform, you would be looking essentially at journals only. Okay, so you will not be able to do the kind of uh, research discovery on an article level uh, like you do on Web of Science, but rather you use this platform as a way to identify um, journals based on the metrics that are available on those journals. Okay. So first things first, if you want to verify whether a journal is indexed in Web of Science, use this search box. Okay? So if let's say, for example, I'm looking to see whether this journal is indexed in Web of Science Journal of Hydrogen Energy. Okay. So I was looking for Journal of Hydrogen Energy. It doesn't exist. Okay, there's only International Journal of Hydrogen Energy. So just take note, as you can see, there's always a lot of similarity in journal names. <laughs> All right? So when that happens, sometimes if um, journals purposely want to, be, to get your, your money, <laughs> they will try and find those established journals and try and mimic those journal names. All right? So just be careful. Always verify and verify based on name and verify based on ISSN, all right? Two very important things. Okay, so let's say, for example, in this case, I am really looking for international journal hydrogen. Hydro, oh, L today, hydrogen. Okay, I'm looking for this journal. Then it says, yes, I have one result. So I can confirm that this journal is in that of science. But my next question might be, is this journal, does this journal have an impact factor? All right? So the next thing you need to do is go and see this journal. So when you click on the journal's name, it opens up the journal's profile page. So this is the journal's profile page that you will see. It will include all the information you need about this journal. So you can see here, it is indexed in the SCIE, Science Citation Index Expanded. So it is a journal that has a journal impact factor. You can also see his publishing information and publication frequency. 
from a researcher's standpoint, looking at public publication frequency is important because you have limited time to publish you, and it's not an immediate thing. Okay, So you have to join a queue, make sure that the editors read your abstract, they think they like your abstract, they think it suits the journal, then they say, okay, then I'll put you through peer review. The whole process might take almost six months, <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> right? So always look for journals of higher frequency. Uh, try not to go for journals that have less than two issues a year. Okay, So two issues would mean what? June and December. Um, it means that your windows are only in June and December. Okay, so that might be quite risky if you are looking for time. Okay, time, uh, quick turnaround time. So always aim for those that have higher frequency. So you have the other um, data here that would be useful. So you have your journal's impact factor, okay, how it's calculated. The formula is there. There is also a link to the articles. Okay, so the journal's articles are here. So these are the citable items, meaning the articles and reviews from this journal. You can always click through and see the details and click view in Web of Science to link back into Web of Science to see the abstract. Okay, um, if there's an open lock here, it means that this open access uh, article. Then you also have the journal citation indicator here. So this is 0 0.86, so slightly below global average. Okay? But like I said, this is a new indicator. So from now on, all those journals that are in Q1 will be aiming to try and bring up their own JCI to be of better impact. Okay. The citation distribution is here for the uh, content. So which are which type of documents are more highly cited. Then you have the open access content. So like I mentioned about uh, curation and um, collection management, this would help you to uh, check whether there's too much free content to, to justify a full subscription fee or not. Okay. Then um, the rank. So if you're looking at quartiles uh, now that we have a JCI, just take note, there's two types of quartiles now. We have a JIF quartile, which means Journal Impact Factor quartile. Okay, and I need to increase this. And we also have the Journal Citation Indicator quartile. All right. So just take note, there's two different quartiles now. Okay. Then in terms of the citation network, this is where you get that information about the cited half-life. Okay, there will be an explanation of what it is. And if you click on this, okay, this is something very interesting. So um, question, Sir Pat, uh, have you ever, has your article ever been rejected by a journal before? So many times, too many yeah. to count. Yeah, so the reason why I'm asking you this question is because for the early career researchers, it is part and parcel of research journey, right? To be rejected by journals. Yeah. Well, it's one thing that I say, if you haven't been rejected, you haven't actually published yet. Yes, yes, yeah. But the next question will be, then how do you find the alternative journals to publish in? Exactly. So after yeah. you've been rejected, where can you go? So now, most of the time, the early career researchers researchers will go back to their professors and ask, help, where can, can I publish? Okay. But now on um, journal citation reports, you're able to see the citation relationships here, meaning this journal has been cited by other sources. Okay, So which are the other sources? You could click on this particular one and you can see, yeah, it has been cited by International Journal of Hydrogen Energy, which is this one. So I will not be looking at this. I could look at energies. Uh, energy research, energy conservation, and these become my alternative um, publication sources. Yeah, So this becomes an, a very useful tool for you to uh, get alternative journal titles based on the one that was that you that was rejected. okay? Now going further, 
Let's look at the other metrics. So all the metrics here, there will be an explanation. There's a link to learn more. Okay, so if you want to learn more about them, just go there. This one, contributions by organizations and country. This is, uh, to me, is something very useful because it gives me an idea of who the contributors are essentially. Meaning, if I see a lot of con uh, contributors from only the European countries or US, con US, then it tells me something about the focus of that journal. It could be very US or European focused. So if I am from Southeast Asia and I don't have that perspective from Europe or US in my research, then maybe it might not sit very well with this um, journal. Okay? So this gives you an idea uh, of whether it's suitable or not. Okay. Uh, and then at the bottom here, there will be the immediacy index. You are also able to see the calculation, how it has been derived. Okay. Okay, now uh, I think Sapet has asked me about getting a list of journals for the arts. So I will do that now. Okay, so besides looking for a specific journal title, you can actually browse for a category of journals. Yeah, so you can click on browse categories. Okay, and you could look at uh, here. So we have economics and business. Okay, so this would be for um, uh, finance, uh, accountancy. Yeah. yeah, so you could click on economics and business and you have 21 categories to look at. So for accountancy, we don't have a specific category called accountancy, but the closest would be something like business finance. Okay, so let's look at business finance first. Yeah, then after that, we move on to the arts. Sure. Okay, so business sure. finance, you can click on that, uh, that category name. And you would see two lines. Okay, the first line that refers to ESCI. So there are 111 journals in business finance that do not have a journal impact factor. Okay, so these are journals in ESCI. Then if you want those that have a journal impact factor, this would be in SSCI, and these are the 110 uh, uh, journals. So if I click on 110, this would then give me the list of 110 journals I can choose from. So these are the uh, journals. You can sort this by journal impact factor. So 2020 JIF. Okay. And Forbes will be number one, Journal of Finance, Journal of Financial Economics, Journal of Accounting and Economics. So these are the list of journals. Okay. You can export this for your reference through the year as well. So you can click on export, export this into a CSV file. And that will include all the indicators here. Now, one thing about the indicators I've listed here, this is a custom view that I've created for myself. So that's why it's called Julin. Okay. By default, okay, you would see only the journal impact factor, GIF quartile, JCI, and open access code. Okay. If you want to customize it like what I did, you have to register for your own ID and password. So because you've logged in via easy proxy, you can still browse, okay, but you can't personalize. Okay, so in order to personalize, personalize, you need to register. If you have previously registered for Web of Science personalization, you can use that same login. Okay, otherwise you just create another one on the top right-hand corner here. Okay, so once you've done that, you can click on customize and choose the relevant indicators that you want and save it under your preferred name. Okay, so that's why I have this view called Julin. Okay. And the reason why I have this is because this gives me a bird's eye view of the important metrics that I want to consider when I compare between the journals. So let's look at the list first, okay? So JIF, if I sort this by journal impact factor, these are all my Q1 journals, yeah? Q1. But you notice now I have a JCI. 
And interestingly, Forbes has zero citations. Okay, this is something that I want. I, I will want to investigate further. Right? Why is it that JCI does, it does not exist? So I will check with my technical team to find out why. Okay. The, for the other journals here, let's take a look at uh, what is a good example. Ah, so let's look at this too. So Journal of Financial Intermediation is a Q1 journal. Impact factor is higher than this one, Journal of Accounting Research. Okay. But its journal citation indicator is 2.08 compared to 1.84. Okay. So now with this new metric, it becomes a way of comparing within your Q1 journals, which are the ones that are performing above global average. Yeah, so you can start comparing journals. Now, if you find it difficult to compare journals this way, there's a way of doing this. So you can select one, two, three, okay? And then you click on compare, okay? So when you click on compare, it will just put those three journals side by side with all the indicators that I have mentioned in the journal profile page. So things like its category, the country, publisher, uh, trend for journal impact factor, everything is there in one view. So you are able to quickly compare between these three journals. Okay. Now let me go back to my browse page. Okay. So this is how you utilize these two uh, metrics together. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned about percentage of articles in citable items, okay. these are 100%, 100%. It means that they do not publish reviews at all. So if you are publishing a review article, do not go there. <laughs> all right. If you are publishing an original research article, then these are um, those that have high 90s percentage those are great journals to publish in, okay? Nobody cites Forbes. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> well, let, let me check because it could be because of the data. So the Forbes might not have released uh, some information to us, but Forbes, hmm, I don't know, it's a bit like the economist, right? Some, so some original research might not always cite articles yeah. in the economist. So perhaps that's the reason why. Yeah. Okay, so that is the list of journals for business finance or accountancy. Now, um, let's look at arts. So go back to browse categories. So you have the arts and humanities here. Okay, so you can click on arts and humanities and this would be the available categories. Uh, fine arts people, what do you wanna see? What do you wanna look yeah, at? So we have these categories here. So if Area studies, Asian studies, classics, cultural studies, folklore, history, and philosophy of science, humanities, uh, and medieval and Renaissance studies. Yeah. Anything in specific you want to look at? Otherwise, I'll just leave this as it is. Um, then if you want to click on, say, history, okay, or cultural studies, maybe. So cultural, studies. cultural studies, yeah. yeah. So cultural studies here, you, you notice that there's one in SSCI and there's one in AHCI, all right? So just remember for AHCI, these are journals that do not have a journal. They may not have a journal impact factor, but a lot of times, some of these journals do cover both, both categories. Maybe that's the reason why there's a, it's 45 for both, okay? So let's look at this SSCI list. So there are 45 journals here for cultural studies. Harden the internet because everyone is home, so everyone's hogging the broadband. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have 45 journals here and you have, if we sort this by journal impact factor, journal of consumer culture, theory, culture and society, communication and critical cultural studies, so all these are um, options, yeah? So depending on the topic that you want um, to publish in. 
Okay, so this is the, the list and the way you use the um, metrics is the same as how I've explained earlier on. So you go by quartiles or you go by JCI. So 2.26 would mean this journal is performing two times better than the others in the same category. Okay. This one, South Atlantic quarter, Quarterly, quite interesting. 11 times better. <laughs> And there are some that are in Q2. You, you see the performance of the JCI become a little bit more erratic as you go down the quartiles. So the Q1 journals tend to always be above one. Okay? But as you go down to Q2, Q3, and Q4, you notice that sometimes their performance becomes quite weak. All right? so, so that's where um, these are kind of telltale signs where the journal has been there for quite a while, or maybe they... they um, need to back up in terms of the, the number of impactful content that they want to publish. Okay. Any other requests for lists? Ladies and gentlemen, want to pipe in here. I, I see a few faculty members from education as well. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll go there. Education, let me see whether we have something there. Uh, it could be across a few different things. So things like social science. Yeah, problem. Social science, you have your educations here. So education mm -hmm. and educational research, uh, education, scientific disciplines. So when you see that there's multiple uh, categories here, if you want to include all three, okay, uh, what you could do is go to the full browse table there and use the filters, okay? So under browse journals, uh, on the left-hand side, there will be a filter, the black box right here. So you can click on this. Uh, let me deselect all and clear reset this filter. I think we're still in cultural studies. Yeah. Are you seeing 20,900? Uh, okay. yeah. Right, yeah. So here okay. under the categories, this is where you start to include the multiple educations right there. So if you see E, you have education one, two, three. Yeah. So you can include this three uh, and apply. And this becomes a list of 857 journals in education that you could refer to. Right? If you want to filter this to only those that have a journal impact factor, you add another filter. So you can put in a filter of um, JIF quartal. So you only want this four. Or you could only want those that have a journal impact factor, which are essentially the science citation index and the social science citation index. Okay. And then you apply. Okay. So now from 800 plus, it drops to 341 journals that have a journal impact factor in education. Okay. Um, for law, okay, we could try and find something as well. So let's look at categories. We do a search on law. There is one right there. Okay. Apply. Okay. This has basically included law in here. So I remove education. Okay. And now these are the journals in law that have a journal impact factor. So 151 journals that you can refer to. Okay. So again, just export the list. Now take note, um, there is an export limit to this list. So um, that only the top 20, uh, the top 600 lines will be exported. Okay? So make sure that you, you filter this down to less than 600 journals if you want to export. Okay? There are other filters available um, that could be useful. So certain, uh, some countries like Malaysia, they do have um, a performance measurement where they say, oh, uh, which are the journals in the top 10% uh, 
based on journal impact factor. Then the filter that you would be using is things like the journal impact factor percentile. Okay, so in the top 10 percentile would mean that 90 to 100. So you can set the percentile to look at the top 10%, top 5%, top 1%, uh, up to you. Okay, and that will then show you those journals that fulfill this criteria. Okay. If you want to look at those open access, you can also filter this by open access. Um, so you look at the journal level filters. So those that are in DOAJ uh, means that it's full open access. Uh, highly likely uh, those that are in quartile journals would require an article processing charge. Okay. So just um, you can use this for your own uh, evaluation on where to publish. Okay, and that's about it actually. So if you need to um, uh, refer to any help functionalities or you have any issues, uh, there's always this resource center on our databases. So on any platform that you're, you're looking at like Web of Science or even journal citation reports, there is always a resource center. So if you click on this, um, any product updates will be shown on this first tab, okay? And we have a guided tour on how the journal impact factors are calculated, where you can get them. Uh, we also have um, a help center. Okay, so this is where it's very important. Number one, training resources. So if you want to uh, spread the word and you want to get your students um, to know more about journal citation reports, you can always make use of some of these training resources that we have and share them to your students. Uh, if you come across any questions that you want to ask, either you can email me directly or you can submit an inquiry. Okay, then there's a help guide. So this help guide is important. I'm going to click here. Remember, I was talking about those journals that are delisted, okay? those that are suppressed. Okay? So we have the title suppressions list here. So for this year's uh, list, we have suppressed these journal titles. Okay. And the reason why they have been suppressed have also been indicated. Yeah. Um, if you want to see the suppression list from previous years, you can click here to see the previous year's list. All right. Um, if you want to see those journals that have been issued an, a letter of editorial expression of concern, this is the link. And you can look at the 2021 list. And these are the ones. Okay, so this is uh, about how transparent we are in terms of maintaining the, the integrity of the, the journals in the system. And this is also to help protect the researchers and early career researchers and prevent them from um, publishing in predatory journals. Okay, so let me here, um, I've included a link to uh, a quick start guide. So you could actually share this with your uh, colleagues or even your students. Okay. Um, and this is my email, so which I will also type in the chat box. So if you have any questions after this, you can always reach out to me to clarify. Okay. So now we have about 10 minutes, I think. If there's any questions, anyone? Um, Happy to take those questions now. You can unmute yourself. Excellent. Feel free to ask Julian some questions, guys, while, while you're still here. Yeah, every time, there, silence, every time there's silence, there's always two things. Either they are lost or it's very clear. <laughs> I hope it's the latter. <laughs> Hopefully it's very clear. Beth, Beth Tan is here from pharmacy. Sir Larry. Mom Linda from Computer Engineering, Sir Larry from Business, AJ Fine Arts, Sir Marlo is here also, Dr. Malunha, Education. You have questions? Or uh, maybe, maybe, our, maybe our students. Sir, sorry, sir. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I don't know if uh, this is appropriate now. No? Uh, maybe we'll just uh, uh, can you help us look for some uh, publications that uh, have uh, minimal fees or publication fees or no fees at all? Uh, that, that, that's, <laughs> very, that's a 
frequently asked question, yes. But um, we don't have that information readily available. But um, there is the master journalist. So this, this link here, master journalist, this gives you all the journals that are indexed in uh, Web of Science. Okay, including those that have been newly indexed. So newly indexed meaning um, they might not have the indicators yet, but they have just been indexed into Web of Science and accepted. Okay, so you can actually use this to perhaps search for the journal that is of interest to you, but there is currently no um, search filter for article processing charges because um, the field is not mandatory for the journals when they want to be listed here. So let me just give you an example. Uh, let me try and list this. Business, business, yeah. Yeah, so category, uh, let's see, accounting and finance. Uh, Oops, listener, nothing listener open access. Some. So then if we look at business, 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 finance. Okay, so there are 23 that are open access. So it means that probably um, some of them would require a fee. So that is one level of filtration that you could do. Yeah. Uh, alternatively, if you are able, if you want to go into each of these journals, so let's say um, view a profile. Okay. Sometimes they, they do provide uh, information on their fees, okay? but not always. If they do, we will include it here under general information. Um, if it's not listed, then there, there could be an opportunity to visit the website to see. But currently, yeah, I'm afraid there's no way for you to search just on which are those that require a fee. So sorry, uh, Unless so, they visit the website of the journal. Yeah, correct. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, we have lots of students here as well. So... Anybody can just unmute themselves and ask questions. There's one more thing that I, I think I forgot to mention was this thing. So there's this link called Match My Manuscript. So if, um, say for example, you have written your paper already, but you don't know where to publish, uh, you could actually use this tool. So you can click on Match My Manuscript. It takes you to master journal lists and you just register for a free account. And once you're logged in, just type in your uh, article title. So I could just, uh, I'll just put in some uh, name. So you can put in your title, your abstract, and then click on find journals. And based on the title and the abstract, the system will actually give you a recommendation of where you can okay. publish. Yeah, so, so this morning I actually showed this to somebody from uh, New Zealand and he immediately went to try and use this and he said that he found an excellent match for his manuscript that he, he's trying to find a home for. So you could try this out if you currently have already almost finished writing your paper, put that in and see what this might, pop, might give you. Yeah. And I think this is also a very safe way for researchers as well, because there is a link to the journal profile. So from this journal profile page, you can also link to the publisher's website so that you're sure that you're going to the right journal and not doing a new oh. search and ending up somewhere else. <laughs> yeah.